What's up guys, welcome back to another video, hope you're all doing well today and welcome to some MX Simulator, not MX Bikes today. Uh, as you know, there's very few occasions when I load up this game. As you also know, the times when I usually do load it is because we're doing some Enduro and that is no different today. We have got the 2024 Gunnison Enduro, this is round 9 of MXS Magazine Enduro series maybe. Uh, tracks created by Jack Gatland, I'll be honest I don't stay up to date with anything MX Simulator related these days. Uh, all I know is having downloaded this track I had a read of the description it says lap time should be around 10 to 15 minutes and it's nice to be able to hop onto sim every now and then as well and especially uh, at this current time we're trying to get a whole bunch of videos ahead to go and enjoy the uh, the weekend over at Fox Hills watching the Vets MX and Nations I need a little bit more content more so than the uh, MX bikes itself can provide for me so what I've done today is instead of just going you know what I've not touched the game in a uh, couple months maybe since whenever the last video was uh, I decided to load up Checkers Block Pound track and I spun maybe five to ten laps around there just so the fingers were uh, slightly fresher than they normally are so I shouldn't be as terrible as always but there's probably still going to be quite a few crashes as we know on this game when you do crash you have to sit and think about what you've done for uh, seven to ten seconds at a time so hopefully there won't be too many of that something I have done as well is I changed my camera settings a little bit. I just uh, made it slightly lower down and then slightly further away and I can't really explain why but it just didn't feel comfortable with how I had it uh, before previously. So I've changed it ever so slightly. I've also toned down my reshade settings a lot because I don't know what I was thinking in the past but it gave everything a slightly reddish, reddish hue and it just made everything like way 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 too bright. So we've toned it all down a little bit today. Now in terms of enduro track, I don't know if this is more on the single trail side of things or if we're going to get some... I accidentally took a screenshot. Or if we're going to get some like hard enduro stuff with rocks and logs etc. The photo that I've used in the thumbnail is one of the pictures that uh, Jack Gatland used on the MX Simulator forum post itself. So save me a job, thank you very much sir. Uh, but yeah, I didn't see too much in the way of the hard stuff. So we could just be riding around doing some trail riding today instead but I, I don't mind that at all in terms of playing this game in general not the biggest fan of outdoors stuff anymore i like loading up my supercross every now and then until i get to a whoop section other than that i just like chilling out having a good time every now and then i might, might do some free ride stuff where just go and get upside down and hit the old double and triple whips that this game allows you to do but for some reason uh, but I don't think I even... When was the last time I downloaded gear, actually? I don't know when the last time I downloaded gear or bikes was. I usually just rotate through uh, whatever whatever I have in my game already. Now, this track itself, it is... I think it's an accessory to a track called Gunnison National prior to this Enduro Park being released. The original track was created by Atlasaur, who was... I don't know if he's still making tracks this day, but very, very... Uh, I want to say, like top tier track creator back uh, back when I was playing the game at least he had a lot of good track releases that everyone seemed to really really enjoy and this is always nice coming back on sim I feel like sim tracks have had a bit of um resurgence isn't the right word but a bit of a glow up as of over the course of the last year or so uh, I just feel like the, the texture work that people do especially with like the norms and stuff given the engine limitations that they have they do a really really good job especially on the RF tracks as well the main series national tracks always look really really good and if you have a, a PC capable of running them I would definitely recommend downloading the higher resolution versions unfortunately because of how the game is as well it can get quite hard to see the erode so I think what a lot of the top boys do is they download essentially what is a play-doh version which is almost no detail in the textures at all make everything look as plain as possible so that the road sticks out more so they can see what's happening which when you're going as fast as they go on this game and when you can afford to make basically zero mistakes because you'll watch yourself and then again lay on the floor to for 10 seconds at a time i can understand why they do that so i've got no issue with that at all but it just means you might not if you're if you're a watcher rather than a player you might not get the best um idea of what the tracks really do look like so yeah i definitely recommend always going for the highest version possible if your PC can run it. Where on earth does this go? It's like we're skipping across ruts and all sorts here. Around the back of a little log cabin. Oh, skirt. So it looks like we do actually use part of the uh, the national track itself. There's definitely... 
two ways to go here. You go under the bridge first and see see what comes up. <laughs> I don't know if I'm meant to be going over or under this at all. Uh, no, I think under was the move. Under, under, definitely, definitely. So then we go round here and oh, do I loop back and then go over the bridge? No, we jump across. Hang on. Yo, yeet. Very peculiar. I wonder if that's maybe if you're meant to go over the bridge, but then if you crash, you can do something different. Oh, I did. Anyway, we're going to carry on. This is why, please, track raters, I really wish you'd start doing this. Release track maps for your tracks. Actually, the EP might off. Let me let me check something. Map scale, what? No, there is there is no track map, unfortunately. So uh, we've got to do what we've got to do. So yeah, you come across uh, this bridge here. I don't... It definitely looks like you're meant to ride underneath it, do a loop and jump over rather than ride across it. I don't know uh, what timing gates are saying there. No, yeah, you have to go underneath it and loop around. Okay, that makes sense. I'm still getting these weird black box glitches on the game. I have no idea uh, what's doing in regards to that, but we're still on the right path. We will still move forward. So let me get my cursor off the screen. Thank you. I cannot stand seeing the cursor on the screen. It just plays with my OCD. I absolutely hate it, but back to it. Onto the national track again. The actual motocross track itself seems fairly enjoyable seems quite fast fairly smooth nothing too too difficult about it a couple of ruts in each corner that hold you nicely uh, i am going to slow down so i do not get kicked over the handlebars over these logs but at the same time i don't want to uh scumbag it and miss them out completely and go around the side of them because that would not be fun that's not what enduro is about at the end of the day let's hop up probably to the left hand side here would make the most sense and then background okay you should cross over the track a couple of times noted it's probably very, very easy to work out where you're going. I'm just, uh, I'm getting a little bit old, you know. The eyes are playing up. The brain doesn't work quite as quick as it used to back in the day. So it takes me a little bit longer to uh, to learn things. I was looking originally when I was scrolling through MX Simulator tracks for another one of them, like, don't fall maps. So I'm going to have another little dig through the forums once I've done recording this. And if I do find one, then again, expect another MX Simulator within the next week or so. Uh, let's get up here, round to the left. This is a little bit tricky. When you get turns or straights as well uh, on on, a, on an off camber on this game, it can be really, really difficult to get the bike going in the direction that you want it to go to. But that wasn't too bad. It, nothing too challenging. There we go. There's my mistake. This is where the muscle memory comes in. So usually, if you uh, play the game fairly often, you know how far you have to turn and how early you have to start standing the bike back up coming out of corners. Uh, I am okay in the corner at the moment. It's exiting the corner. I always seem to overhook a little bit too much. I don't start standing the bike up soon enough. And that is just a project, a project, a product of playing so much MX bikes because they're just completely different handling and physics models. Uh, I'm a big advocate of you can be quite good at both or you can be insane at one and okay at another. I don't think you can be insane at both at the same time, unless you put a bunch of time in on both of them and keep switching back and forth regularly, uh, just because of how different they are. You know, in, in sim, you lean forwards a hell of a lot, at least I do. I find it the easiest way to keep uh, control of the front end. Uh, in bikes, you lean back a lot, so on and so forth. I've even got different button layouts in both games. You saw me accidentally take a screenshot earlier. That's because my touchpad on my PlayStation 4 controller that I use in MX Bikes, it's to look behind me. So if I go past a bit of track and I just want to have a quick double take, I'll look behind me. Obviously, if I'm racing, I'll have a look behind me as well. Whereas in Sim, I always forget that that functionality looking behind doesn't exist. So I'll press it and accidentally take a screenshot and it'll just freeze my game for a second. And I eventually end up learning. I, I, oh, tip -toe, tip -toe, tip -toe, there we go. But yeah, I learn eventually. Uh, so far, this track's actually been pretty, um, really, really straightforward. It's nothing difficult about it at all. Uh, not your typical enduro, I wouldn't say. I expected... Uh, more of a, a hard enduro than all the single track. I imagine if, if this was being used for races, actually, there's probably very, very few opportunities to actually pass anybody. You just have to sit and wait for mistakes, I suppose, or to get a really, really good start, because it has been single track almost everywhere. There is one or two corners, as two ruts in it, and as you saw when we, we go back onto the track every now and then. I mean, this corner has two-ish ruts. I feel like it's one main rut, you know, that you're going to be carrying a bunch of speed around. And if you're quite a bit more competent on the game than I am, which is not hard to do, then you could probably hit these ruts with a good amount of speed as well. Can we hit a little nyad? No, we can't. <laughs> we can't hit a little nyad. That was... Uh, I, I, all my talent just disappeared. Oh, goodness. Okay, this tightens up a bit. So nice and slow. Steer to the left, steer to the right. I should. I always forget to turn my controller over on the list so I can kind of show what I'm trying to explain. But 
hello. Where on earth are we going here? That's so I can try and explain what's going on at the same time. We've done all that, done the bridge, done down here, round, 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 up here, 80, 90, 91, okay, round here. So we got a hook up to the left off the side of the track and join on up here. So it, it kind of, it did look like it went this way slightly, but I wasn't 110% sure. I feel like, like you to idiot proof these tracks for people like me. And then back round, go to the right, skirt. And no idea where the finish line is on this track. I have no idea how early on you hit the finish line on this track either. Um, it, like you could end up doing a lap and a half. You could just do a lap at the very, very beginning. No idea. But yeah, as soon as... I mean, the uh, track thingy at the bottom left, so the pit board, it does say that I am on lap two. So I've crossed the line somewhere. Where that is, we'll have no idea. But hopefully I've not missed any parts or gone the wrong way in any area. It wouldn't be a surprise if I have. It's a pretty common, common thing for me to do these days. We go up the track backwards now. All the way to the top. Oh god, there's so there's so much. There's so much tape everywhere. Oh, careful, careful. And then we go back down the hill. It's getting quite fast pace. Just bang it down into first gear. Use all the engine braking. Bit of front brake action. I very, very rarely use my rear brake in this game because for some reason when I was learning it, uh, I set my rear brake to literally be an, an on-off button. There's no, it's not the trigger at all. It is L1 or left bumper for you xbox players so i literally i have it on or off so i only really tend to use it for brake taps or if i want to really quickly spin around do a 180 i'll just like lock the back end up into the corner one of the things in hindsight if i was to relearn the game again from scratch i probably would change the buttons a lot to uh, to my benefit uh, but it seemed to work back in the day when the competition wasn't quite as as stiff and quite as fierce as it is these days i think these days you gotta be pretty pretty damn perfect with it with everything can't just rock up, like not play for a week, rock up and still do well. You still got to put a good amount of time in. That's not to speak for everybody. We've still got certain uh, certain anomalies in that. There's some players that are just naturally good at the game, or they've put the time in originally and then they don't really venture away and play other motocross games. So then they can come back to it and pick up really, really quickly all the time. Uh, I wish that was me. Unfortunately, any muscle memory I I once had back in the day is uh, gone, well and truly gone out the window. Does not exist. This is. A little bit nicer. This is more my style. It's opened up a bit more. Rather than being super, super tight and twisty. Nice big ruts to hold you in as well. Don't really find much of an advantage between sitting down and standing up in corners on this game. I find it to be very, very similar to each other. Don't really find it affects your power or your traction at all. Uh, the traction as well, to be fair, on this track, really, really grippy. I've had no issues with uh, like front end suddenly going on me or the back end trying to slide around. It's been really grippy the whole way. But then, of course, when you've got ruts are this big anyway it's going to be hard to oh, hard to slide out bring back oh no that, that's such a silly crash so bring back uh, the 2020 the 2020 2012 2012 that makes him better traction bring back the stock jlv traction oh those were the good old days trying to ice skate your way around the uh the I wouldn't, would you call it stock i guess you would call it stock like stock the stock supercross server that had like one or two sx tracks on it back in the day i don't know if they're still a thing or not but who cares? Oh god, that whip did not step out how I wanted it to. And we re regain again. Uh, I, I usually end up cutting out those crashes because it's just it just gets a bit boring, doesn't it? Sitting there for ages until my guy slowly picks himself up and gets going again. I still, I really, really want, and now track they are has touched on this to be fair, but I still really want a game to come along to where you have running back to your bike mechanics. So track they are has it where you fall off. But then the speed in which you stand up again, and then the fact you have to walk over to your bike rather than be able to run to it quickly, makes the whole situation feel really, really tedious. And then you very, very slowly muscle and pick the bike up, and if you're on a certain slope, you can't pick your bike up at all. You have to wait for the bike to like roll down a hill, and then you have to go through the process again. It will start it up again. I'd like it to be implemented into a game, but still be a fairly quick feature to where you can sprint to your bike, then pick it up, and literally just hot start go straight away i think if it was done well and fluid and quickly it would be really really immersive uh, i suppose it's probably quite a hard thing to code and you've got to add like collisions to both rider and to bike and there's this whole I, I don't want to pretend to know what goes into it i do not know coding i do not know game design i don't know anything about that um so one day one day i think it'll happen it'll, it'll come to be it'll come to light eventually so it will Oh, weave our way. Don't go over it. Don't go over it. Don't go over it. Yes. Weave our way through here. The dreaded getting stuck on top of a rut in this game can be very, very treacherous. 
Oh, I overhooked out of the corner again. It's fine. I barely survived that over that log. Careful. Oh, I think I did stiffen up my advanced stability a little bit from last time when I uh, last played this game. Uh, so, as you can see, me trying to get switched over from left to right, it looks very, 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 very stiff. Uh, but that is, uh, that's my own fault, to be fair. I wanted it to be slightly stiffer, so I didn't feel as loose and didn't crash as much, but it obviously comes with its downsides. You can't be super, super rapid in, in these S-bends. But there's a hell of a lot of them. Jesus Christ, it's back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Round this to the left again. Round to the right. Oh, I don't know if I meant to take that line, because it goes across onto the grass, but yeah, there was a slight indentation there, so I feel like it feel like it's allowed. I don't feel like I've gone drastically wrong anywhere either. I don't think I've made huge mistakes. So I'm still aiming for that like 10 to 10 to 15 minute mark. I mean, I've been recording for 16 and a half minutes. So if I have gone wrong somewhere or I am just extremely, oh, he said slow down, slow down, or I'm extremely washed up or there was like five minutes before the start of lap one. Those they could be very many options there. They could be. Um, but yeah, I'm currently 16 and a half minutes deep. So I'm way over the 15, 15 minute lap time that was recommended. I mean, I'm still going to keep trudging along. We'll get done eventually. It's not the end of the world. Back up here. I mean, all of this feels new. It doesn't feel like I've repeated myself anywhere. It still feels like we're uh, touching new ground. Round to the left. Skrr, back up to the top of this hill drop back down. I'm actually, I'm quite surprised to be fair. I think I'm playing slightly better than I expected to. It's like there's there's little glimpses of muscle memory that come back now and then and then it just turns into being hella mid at the game again. But oh god, very, very difficult game to pick up. All the time people say, oh, which game's harder, MX Bikes or MX Simulator? And uh, I would say in, if you want to master one of them, then I think Sim is definitely the harder of the two. I think Bikes is a much more casual experience if you still want a game that gain them extra couple of seconds to be it like at the very very top of the competition then it still does take like a few thousand hours worth of doing uh, but on sim i think you have to play it a bit more regularly to really be in tune with it i'd say to get around the track on both games is fairly similar like just to survive and run laps but then if you want to get to the point where you really want to exceed and get to a top pro level sim i think definitely takes takes more time overall so it depends what you want to get out of each game to be fair if you want a much more casual easy experience uh then bikes is probably way to go if you want super hardcore extra difficult sometimes to the point where it's difficult just to be difficult then sim so we have actually just crossed the line i had no idea the line would be there by the bridge but 12 minutes and 44 seconds was my lap time and i think i probably had like three or four uh, different crashes in there overall so not terrible i did fall within that 10 to 15 minute margin um so there you go a little bit of mx simulator action again if there are any sim tracks in particular that you'd like me to see that i haven't covered in the past then by all means let me know again all i do these days is i just scroll through uh, the tracks thread on the mx simulator forums every now and then and that's basically how i find tracks to play and yeah let me know if you enjoyed this video please do drop a like and subscribe to the channel if you're new it's always very much appreciated and i hope you have a lovely rest of the day whatever you're up to i will catch you all in the next video peace Lin's in the zone, never backing down. Right, MX bike, sees the tour for the town. 2022 champ with a YouTube crown is getting tight, no signs of slowing down. Late nights, bright lights, he's chasing that fame in the digital arena. Right in his name, she's a 10 out of 10. Support his lane, hairline might proceed, but his passion's the same.